Good afternoon, uh, friends. It's a great pleasure. It's a great honor for me to... Uh, Sir, Mike. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a great pleasure and privilege for me to uh, extend a very warm welcome to our guest today, Mr. Katsuo Matsumoto. He is the Chief Representative of uh, Japan International Cooperation Agency at Delhi. He is one of the leading lights of uh, JICA. And uh, before coming to New Delhi, he was Director General of uh, JICA in charge of uh, South Asian Affairs. So in that capacity, he was uh, very deeply engaged in directing uh, several projects in the region. In addition, of course, he has always had a very special interest in India. I have seen some of uh, his writings on uh, JICA projects in uh, India. So he's a very, very well-versed person in the subject, very highly knowledgeable, keeps all his uh, facts, his fingertips. Therefore, it's a great privilege, really, for all of us to know more about JICA's activities in uh, India. Unfortunately, JICA is not that well known even among uh, our political leaders. I understand recently a group of parliamentarians went to Japan, and uh, when uh, their hosts were talking about JICA, our leaders were in a blissful state of uh, ignorance about JICA itself. So that is really not a good augury for us. In my opinion, I think JICA has uh, really rendered uh, a very great service, a tremendous contribution to uh, India's economic uh, development. It's a governmental agency which directs Japan's official development assistance. It is the biggest bilateral development agency in the whole world. It is not only you know, oriented to India. It's a global organization. It is making as much contribution to India as to other countries of, of uh, Asia, Latin America, Africa, etc., etc. Therefore, I think uh, Indians really should try to really know more about the role of JICA, particularly in our country. <clears throat> India is the largest and also the oldest partner of JICA. Many of you might be aware of the fact that our own uh, aid relations with, with uh, Japan started way back in 1958 and India was the first country to receive Japanese development assistance. Since then, India has been a, a major recipient of Japanese development assistance for decades. <clears throat> and in recent years, of course, India has emerged as one of the biggest recipients in Asia of Japanese uh, assistance. So when you talk about JICA's assistance, I think one should talk about three aspects of, of JICA's assistance. JICA's assistance goes in the form of loans, in the form of uh, technical assistance, and also in the form of uh, <coughs> grants. Unlike Western countries, which have always emphasized the importance of grants, JICA has always underscored the importance of uh, loans. Now, why this importance given to loans? Japan has uh, actually taken a lesson from its own past experience. In 1950s, for example, or maybe early 60s, Japan received uh, enormous amounts of loans from uh, World Bank. And then they took it as a challenge. And that's why they think that Loans are good for, for recipient countries. Because if you give loans, then only they will work very hard. And they'll be compelled to see that they stand on their own legs. And in that sense, they can really fulfill their aspirational uh, <coughs> I mean, uh, expectations. So therefore, 
The Japanese have always preferred to, JICA has always preferred to give loans rather than grants or technical license. But it's not to, to overlook the fact that even the quantum of technical assistance and uh, grants is also enormously high. Let's not forget that. Now, when you talk about loans, I have some figures that so far until 2017-18, India actually has received loans from JICA to the extent of about uh, 3 lakh crores. It's a very, very, very big uh, in amount. You can call it loans or you can even call it commitment to loans, whatever it is. Now, out of this, you find that Japanese assistance has really flowed into numerous sectors. For example, transport. 64% of Japanese assistance went to transport. 12% to water, irrigation, etc. Then 9% for energy. Then for agriculture, forest, etc., about 6%. Therefore, you find Japanese assistance really flowing to different sectors of our economy. Not only that, I think out of 29 states you said just before, more than 25 states have received Japanese aid. There's hardly any you know, major state which has really not received the benefits of uh, Japanese aid. It's a very important thing for us to, to take note of. <clears throat> And uh, in recent years, of course, the amount of uh, assistance coming from uh, JICA has considerably increased. Here also we have to, we have to really remember one fact. We talk about the, the overall quantum of Japanese aid, I'm talking about global quantum. It has really come down compared to, <coughs> for example, 1980s or 1990s when Japan was number one, Eight giver. Today, Japan is not a one eight giver. It has really come down in terms of uh, classification. <clears throat> in spite of the fact that the total quantum has really diminished in the last several years, you find that the quantum going to India by way of assistance has really increased, not diminished. And that really shows the importance that Japan really attaches to to this country. Now, let me not really encroach upon uh, Mr. Matumura San's uh, subject. I will only flag a few things where I think Japan's assistance has really been of great use to us. <clears throat> For example, as I said, transport, etc. Now, Japan has extended great assistance to some of our flagship projects, like, for example, uh, New Delhi Mumbai Freight Corridor, New Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor then Chennai, Bangalore, uh, Industrial Corridor, etc., etc. Substantial amount of assistance we have received from, uh, from Japan for these flagships uh, projects. Another area where Japanese assistance has really been uh, conspicuous relates to the, the Northeast region, for example. In recent years, both uh, Prime Minister Abe and also Prime Minister uh, Mubadi uh, we emphasize the need for really developing this neglected uh, region and considerable progress has already made in terms of uh, providing connectivity, in terms of you know, modernizing the, the roadway system, etc., etc., irrigation, then agriculture, environment, all these things are included in, uh, in Japanese uh, assistance to this region. <clears throat> Thirdly, of course, Urban transport system, for example. Again, you find tremendous contribution coming from the Japanese. The metro system in cities like Delhi, then uh, Mumbai, Chennai, Calcutta, then uh, Bangalore, etc., etc. It has really revolutionized the urban transport system in this country. Not only that, Japan is also willing to modernize the conventional rail system in this country. So many delegates have come here, they have studied the, the problems here, and then they have, they have also tried to make recommendations, etc., etc. 
and above all we also know what what is happening between ahmedabad and mumbai also that they are going to introduce sim card system there also and how that is really going to play out in the modernization of uh, this country more the development of this country particularly western india etc that also remains to be seen therefore i think one can really go on go on giving the list of projects list of areas where japanese contribution has made a formidable i mean uh, difference to this country i think i will not uh, really uh, keep i mean keep talking about all these things i think i'll stop here then i will uh, now request mr masumoto to give us a very detailed uh, analysis the detail you know i mean a picture of what jaika has really contributed to this country and uh, what is going to be i mean uh, done in future etc and he was talking about political change for example i think before i came here he said as long as the present system exists in both countries i think there should not be any problem about uh, any disturbance taking place here but i think i would only like to submit one point that is one reason why india japan partnership has really flourished over the over a number of decades is that there has been no problem between the political parties on both sides of the aisle for example there has been bipartisan agreement in india and also in japan nobody really is contesting the the uh, the the need for this partnership there is there is really total agreement on the need for strengthening this partnership that exists in india that also exists in japan so with these words i think i would request to uh, yes much more of this presentation thank you The, uh, the uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Akisaba, uh, to introduce myself. And the, uh, it is a very honor uh, to speak in front of such kind of like a distinguished uh, fellow, uh, eminent persons, and the, the expert about the like uh, India-Japan relations. Yeah, uh, my name is Katsuo Matsumoto, and it is almost nine months uh, since I came to India. Uh, now I'm a chief rep of the, the JICA uh, India uh, office. And the, uh, as the, uh, Professor Kesaban said, that the, the India was our la uh, oldest the different partner. And the, the, in 1958, at the time of the, the Prime Minister Nehru, uh, the, the Prime Minister of Japan, at the time of Mr. Uh, uh, Kishi, uh, he's like a grand part of the, the current Prime Minister, Mr. Abe, agreed to provide the first ODA loan to uh, India. And the uh, representative Nehru uh, would like to utilize this money for the, the purchase of some like uh, uh, the machinery under the, the second uh, five years the plan at that time. And the, after that, we continuously well, did uh, work with the India. So it's uh, more than 60 years well, did, uh, uh, the, we are involved in the like, uh, development, the process of India. Uh, that was very, very fortunate. The uh, uh, situation for the, the Japan and also JICA, and the, uh, uh, because of the, the good relations between two countries, at this moment uh, the, our work volume has been very increased. Uh, let me t t touch upon some like uh, concrete project name uh, later uh, in my presentation. And by the way, today that I take the, my coins, uh, one is a Mahua here, and also the Bini there. And if you uh, have some question, uh, also you can maybe ask them. Yeah. So uh, uh, maybe let us start uh, uh, the uh, some like a broad uh, the, the topic about the uh, uh, Japan India relations. So uh, now the two countries are enjoying the status of the special strategic and global partnership. And the uh, uh, what is like uh, meaning of the special strategic and global partnership? Uh, I, I believe that uh, there are a lot of the uh, aspects that uh, we can discuss and we can agree and we can take action uh, together. Uh, one is like a national security. And in the last uh, Prime Minister meeting, 
uh, the two government agree to have like a two plus two, like a dialogue system, like a defense and the uh, foreign affairs uh, ministry and the uh, minister and the, the second like a person can also the uh, dialogue directly about the uh, uh, security. And also the uh, economic cooperation is the main topic. And the, uh, also the like, uh, well, the people to people exchange uh, between two countries. And the uh, like a global agenda, like a uh, nuclear issues, uh, development of space, and uh, sometimes like uh, uh, sustainable development goals and so on. A lot, lot of these like uh, topic issues. Well, the uh, two government can now discuss and they have like a system of the uh, uh, discussion uh, together. And because of this like uh, uh, very uh, good uh, regulations, now the uh, joint communique of the document, just a result of the discussion of two uh, prime ministers, uh, gradually the increased. Yes, and it, uh, uh, now because of this like a very heavy volume of the document, that we just uh, uh, create an attachment of the document also. And now also uh, totally maybe 100 pages. Uh, the document uh, is really published uh, just after the prime minister meeting. And as I mentioned, that now the uh, uh, the uh, India well did uh, our oldest, and uh, but also where uh, there is the largest uh, uh, bilateral partners. And the uh, uh, the Professor Kesaban said that the, our soft loan uh, facility can be utilized efficiently or effectively for the some large scale infrastructure project in India. And the, uh, I'm not sure that, uh, uh, what is your like uh, image about a loan. Uh, usually, the image of a loan is not so good. Yeah, uh, in terms of like economic cooperation, like a grant aid, or like a technical cooperation, maybe the good work. But uh, uh, loan itself may be uh, in bad image, uh, because uh, sometimes see, the recipient countries have some burden to pay the pay the less money. Uh, but uh, uh, as a professor said, that because of experience in the like uh, uh, just after World War II. Well, the, uh, if we can utilize the, the soft loan very efficiently, that is really, really contribute to the, the uh, development of the, the country. And especially that the, the we can well, the borrow the money for the large scale infra infrastructure. And the, uh, uh, in the case of like a grant aid, for example, because of the budget constraint of the, the say, donor countries, well, the, the grant aid cannot be utilized for the large scale infrastructure. So at this moment, uh, the grant aid uh, is usually utilized for some like a small scale the projects, uh, uh, like a schools, hospitals, sometimes the, like, uh, uh, like I say, the, uh, the institute uh, building and so on. So uh, India is really, really capable, efficiently and effectively utilize the, the, this loan. And the, uh, when I became the, the director of India division in Tokyo, in JICA, I checked the uh, record of the repayment of the Indian government in the past 30 years. And the, uh, I could not find any record about the, the delay of the repayment. Even at the time of the, the say, economic crisis in 1991, well, the US government continuously to repay the money. And it's very, very amazing. And like we know that the, the other countries, like uh, South American uh, or like uh, other like uh, uh, Southeast Asian countries, sometimes yeah, they have some default to repay the money to donor countries. But uh, in the understanding, the India has never in the default to repay. So it means that you have a credibility. Uh, so uh, when I say was a director, that uh, sometimes I persuade the uh, board members of JICA. Uh, because they are a bit uh, uh, concerned about the increase of this like uh, loan volume to India. Uh, but uh, if we can see some like uh, macroeconomic situation and some like uh, data about the repayment uh, uh, report and also the, uh, uh, the performance of the each executive agency of the project, we can increase. And the, uh, when I was a director, the total commi annual commitment of the new loan to India was almost uh, 2 billion US dollar. But now, the, uh, in the latest one, is almost 5 billion US, US dollar. So uh, there are some like, uh, also change of the like, uh, perception uh, about the India. Uh, you can maybe uh, utilize the, any such kind of like, uh, uh, support very, very effective. And there are several the, uh, say, uh, event uh, in the past maybe 10 years. And as you know, that every year, the two prime ministers meet together 
and to discuss about some like uh, well the, uh, uh, the economic cooperation and the ODA is uh, every time the one of the, the main topic uh, between two uh, prime ministers. And the uh, the reason to you that the uh, uh, between the Mr. Abe and the Mr. Modi, uh, there are some initiative that launched for the new cooperation. Why is the as Professor Kasaban told that the uh, Act East uh, the initiative? Uh, this was the uh, well uh, instructed by the Mr. Modi first. Uh, we should uh, uh, pay more and more attention to the North East region of India. And there are several reasons, uh, background why is that the, uh, we need to maybe have a more good, uh, uh, say, the uh, economic situation there. Uh, it is usually said that the Northeast region is kind of like backward in terms of the economic uh, situation. And the second is that the after like uh, uh, Myanmar uh, maybe change its administration, well, the, it is maybe easier for the other countries to support this like uh, connection between the ASEAN countries and the South Asia. And the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Japan has uh, some like our uh, own history that the, uh, uh, maybe you know about the, some like uh, World War II uh, era uh, between like uh, Myanmar and the, the Manipur, for example. So the, we have some uh, sentiment to work for the uh, Northeast region. So uh, th now there are uh, one forum, uh, so-called Activist Forum. So we get together to talk about what kind of cooperation we can uh, extend. And the one is the uh, enhancing connectivity, uh, second is the forest management, and third is the bamboo. Uh, see, bamboo is kind of like uh, one of the major resources in the northeast uh, region. So the, the, now we are uh, discussing the, what, uh, what kind of the, maybe like uh, craft of the bamboo can be created uh, through the uh, technical cooperation. And the disaster management is also one of the topic. Uh, in northeast region, there are like a mountainous area. And sometimes it's a slope. Uh, protection uh, method is not so is strong. So the, 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 through the, our technical cooperation, uh, we also try to support, kind of like create a manual about the, the say the, the technical aspect of this like a strong protection. And the uh, last one is a people to people exchange. And we now try to expand the uh, uh, number of the, the dispatch of the volunteers, uh, like a Japanese language teachers. Yeah, and the, the northeast regions uh, really request us to increase the number. And the, uh, this map just uh, showed the, the concrete project and the under JICA uh, its cooperation. <coughs> and the, uh, maybe you can see the red. <coughs> okay. Maybe you can see. Hmm? Can you see that red one? No. It's okay. Maybe you can see some red. Uh, right? Uh, they are just like highways uh, we are supporting. <coughs> and before choosing these like uh, highways, uh, we have, uh, uh, say, uh, surveyed, we prioritized the uh, section of the, the road, uh, which one is uh, more, most like uh, contribute to the economic activity of the regions. And the, uh, not only uh, just uh, like uh, supporting the highway uh, project, but also like uh, forest management in Nagaland and Tripura. And the, in Guwahati, uh, the, uh, some like uh, water and the sewage project has been uh, go going on. And the, in Megaraya, recently that we signed a long agreement of the Umiyama hydropower project because uh, they have a rich resource of the hydropower. So uh, uh, gradually, uh, we try to increase the, the, our support uh, this uh, region. And the, uh, I'm a bit hesitant to say about some sensitive issue uh, in Arunachal Pradesh, while the uh, uh, now the Japanese government a bit hesitate to uh, start some uh, project because of some like uh, political reason. Yeah, so uh, uh, I may, myself have never been the Arunachal Pradesh. Yeah, maybe private trip may be okay, but official trip uh, I should hesitate. Is there any problem? Uh, well, the uh, well, uh, this is. Right. This is this is a closed session, well, open session. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, one uh, one episode that when we start uh, survey about this uh, connectivity, well, the just uh, say well, the published uh, this like uh, information. Uh, I was in Tokyo. I got a phone call from the Chinese embassy in Tokyo. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> they asked me. 
Yeah, we are doing a survey. <laughs> yeah. So they are very, very uh, interesting. Yeah. So that's the situation. And the uh, next is uh, more like a broad concept of the, the free and open Indo-Pacific. Yeah, <coughs> and like you know that the, uh, uh, this concept is originally come from Japan, and because uh, we really put the emphasis on the maritime order in the uh, Indo-Pacific. Uh, uh, so uh, this like uh, uh, area should be maybe uh, peaceful and enjoy prosperity. Uh, with such kind of like uh, uh, stability of the politics and also the, the uh, as you say, no limitation about the uh, uh, invasion or some like uh, uh, terrorism and the like piracy and so on. And the, based on the, the concept of the, the uh, rule of the law, uh, we'd like to maybe uh, uh, collaborate with the, the neighborhood countries like uh, India well they achieve some such kind of like a peaceful the, uh, uh, situation in this uh, region and the uh, uh, northeast region development and also uh, Africa Asia Africa cooperation context is also included this framework and the uh, uh, so uh, uh, one uh, key word of this like uh, uh, free and open in the Pacific is kind of like connectivity and how we can maybe connect uh, like uh, South Asia uh, to Middle East and also the Africa. Yeah, and the, uh, not only just the maritime safety, as I mentioned, some like uh, common value of the uh, rule of law, or sometimes like a democracy, and the also like, uh, uh, how you say, well, the uh, <coughs> communication building or uh, 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 trust each other, like a relationship, maybe the very, very, very the basics of the, the uh, this, uh, the concept. So uh, JICA is uh, involved in this like uh, uh, very broad the concept and they start discussion with the Indian side of what kind of the cooperation we can do. And the, it is uh, generally said that India has a very good uh, relation with like African countries. The many private companies are working there. And the, although that the uh, uh, Japan uh, have some like uh, uh, say investment in Africa, but very, very limited. So the, uh, you have a very advantage and in Japan, we have some good uh, supply chain in the, the Southeast Asia. So the, maybe we can collaborate together uh, to complement each other. This is just one uh, the, the idea how to maybe collaborate. And then we will get that Yeah, yeah. right, right. So uh, uh, in this uh, context, uh, the uh, last uh, Prime Minister meeting, they agree about some like a cooperation in third countries. Uh, by touch upon the, the very specific name, uh, like in Sri Lanka, and the, the, in Myanmar, and the, the, in Bangladesh, and also in Kenya. And the, maybe the hospital project in Kenya is kind of like, uh, well, the Asia Africa uh, cooperation uh, context. And the, uh, we are discussing uh, with the, the MEA here, uh, what kind of the collaboration we can do. And the uh, JICA is an implementing agency with ODA, Official Development Assistance. But the uh, uh, Indian government has uh, your own like a scheme to support other countries through the, the uh, DPA, uh, Development Partnership Administration. And the, uh, now, by utilizing two scheme, uh, we try to maybe co-finance such kind of like a hospital project. This is kind of like one way, one approach, how to uh, realize uh, this concept. And for your reference, well, this map shows just an example of what kind of the project uh, we have financed before in Southeast Asia. So as I mentioned, that the one uh, key word is the connectivity. And the, uh, uh, maybe you know that this is Vietnam, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia, and the, uh, Myanmar. And the, uh, this is kind of like a Mekong region. And the, the, before we have started the supporting this Mekong region, well, the, we did a, a master plan in you know, collaboration with the East partner countries. And this is a, like a East West corridor. This is a, like a Southern uh, corridor. And this is a North East. And the, uh, uh, firstly, we put a uh, priority on this like, uh, uh, East West corridor. Because uh, in Vietnam, there are a lot of the foreign investors there. And they, uh, they want to utilize the port in Thailand, uh, the port. Yeah, but uh, uh, because, uh, but uh, there's no good uh, access from the, this part to this part, so they need such kind of like a good highway. 
And the, uh, on the other hand, the, the, on the banking side, they want to utilize the Hawaii code uh, when say, they want to export like Japan or like United States. So uh, there's some like a need uh, from the, the private sectors to develop such kind of like uh, corridors. Uh, so uh, this is just, just an example that we just finance one bridge here, a second Mekong bridge project. Uh, this is just uh, over the, the Mekong River. And this is the first uh, project that JICA uh, financed the, the one project in two countries together. And the Thailand, Laos are co co uh, recipient countries. Yeah, uh, actually I was in charge of this uh, uh, bridge project at the time. And the, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, there are big voice from the, the private sector in this region. So the now they are very utilizing the, this uh, a bridge very effectively. And uh, this is kind of like a, a contribution to the maritime uh, area uh, in ASEAN uh, countries. Well, the typical project is a port uh, development. And the, uh, maybe I'm a bit hesitant to say that we are not so ambitious about this like a port project. I mean, that we have no intention to like occupy the port and so on, and just maybe finance the development of the port. And by utilizing the port, uh, they are enjoying the like uh, the export or import of the, uh, the of many many product, especially in the 80s, when the Japanese yen was very very strong. Many, many Japanese investors uh, try to uh, shift their like, uh, uh, production uh, uh, plan uh, from Japan to the Southeast Asia. And the, uh, they want to utilize this like, uh, port as an like, export uh, purpose. And the, each uh, country uh, started the, the, develop the, the SEZ, Special Economic Zone. And so uh, this is kind of like one set of the successful the, uh, the package of the infrastructure development at that time. And in the Singapore, the Lee Kuan Yew uh, have a such kind of like uh, say successful package as a model. And the Malaysia, Thailand, they try to make run from this uh, uh, the, uh, Singapore the model uh, for this purpose. And because of this like uh, uh, part of the development, that the, maybe the maritime safety uh, has been secured uh, at this moment. <coughs> and the more broader. Uh, this is kind of like uh, a project or a uh, corridor uh, JICA have been uh, supporting. Maybe this is too broad, but uh, we are now supporting some of the corridor project in Africa. And also, the, uh, as I mentioned, corridor project in, in the Mekong region. And India is a very, very huge country, so the, the, maybe a corridor project inside of the, the, uh, the India. So finally, they are connecting together. And they have a very good connectivity. Yeah, this is just an idea. <coughs> and if we, we look at just uh, so India and Japan, the, the relations in terms of like uh, the investment um, only, uh, this uh, graph just uh, show the uh, how did uh, now we are, our like relationship has been very uh, deepened and increased. And at this moment, that the total number of Japanese company in India is more than 1,400. Yeah, and it is almost uh, 2.5 times more than uh, in the uh, 10 years. And of course, that the uh, Japanese people living in India has been increased. And it, in 2009, uh, that was at 4,000, but now 9,000. Yeah, I'm not sure maybe Korea, because we are big company and uh, number of the, the population living here is uh, really big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, uh, this does not mean that the, the if every Japanese investor really, I should say, the, uh, scattered, I mean, located in many, many places. They selected uh, some like location, as they are like a uh, uh, base, like uh, Chennai, uh, Mumbai, uh, Ahmedabad, uh, Delhi, uh, Haryana, and so on. And the, uh, so uh, uh, one of the uh, big uh, complaint from them, not, sorry, sorry, sorry to say complaint uh, about the business in India is uh, like uh, uh, infrastructure uh, development, and the second is the land acquisition, and the third one is the not uh, say transparent policy. Yeah, but I believe that the the, the, the because of the initiative with some like a state, the uh, environment of the investment has been really, really dramatically uh, improved in the past five years. So uh, this is kind of like a background. <laughs> the, uh, let me quickly go to the uh, JICA's role. And the, what is JICA? 
Uh, JICA is a government agency of Japan. Uh, we are handling the uh, development assistance uh, to developing countries. And now we have uh, uh, more than 150 uh, partner countries and we have 100 uh, overseas office. And as I mentioned, uh, India has been our largest uh, the partner, although the number of the staff of India is not so largest. Yeah, so uh, we need to maybe expand the number of the, the staff also. They work very, very hard. Uh, in uh, India, uh, ADB and the World Bank also has like office, and the, uh, uh, their cooperation volume to India is also maybe the largest in their like, portfolio. And the uh, uh, ADB people say that the uh, their number of the staff here is almost 150. Yeah, but uh, our number is uh, here just 60. Yeah, so uh, they say that they want to recruit the, our, our staff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because of efficiency. Yeah, so uh, we are very, very proud of that. But it's a bit uh, hard for the management that how to maybe keep them. Yeah. Oh, sorry. And the, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, as uh, Professor Kesavan said, that we have a very uh, 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 basic modality to support with the technical cooperation. Uh, technical cooperation means that uh, we dispatch the expert in specific area. As I mentioned that uh, in mountainous area, if you need some like uh, uh, the technical the, the, the manual about the, the how to protect the, the slope. So you need some like know-how knowledge from the expert. So we dispatch such kind of like people from Japan and they stay here like two years, for example, and work with the counterpart agency uh, to create a new manual or to check the, uh, check the like, situation with some like uh, uh, slope and so on. And the grant aid, yes, uh, India still did a very suitable countries uh, to provide the grant aid. Although that did, uh, basically the your government really reluctant to receive the grant aid. Yeah, I think maybe it come from the, your pride. Yeah, you, you can do by yourself almost anything at this moment. Yeah, and the uh, ODA loan is kind of like a major the instrument for us to support you. So uh, this is JICA grants. Uh, the total number of the, the staff is uh, 1,800. And the, uh, uh, we have some like uh, vision and strategy. And the mission one, mission two, mission three, uh, uh, poverty reduction, uh, improving governance, addressing global agenda. Uh, this is maybe, uh, as you say, the common to other also the development agency. But the last one, the achievement, human security. Uh, human security is uh, uh, come from the, the uh, concept of the, the Amartya Sen. Yeah, uh, Amartya Sen really emphasizes about the, the capability approach of the people. And the, the, in order to have a full potential uh, of the, the uh, humans, uh, the, the, the government should get rid of some like uh, restriction and some like uh, very uh, uh, tough the, the environment for the people. So we should maybe secure the security of the human. Yeah, and this is come from the, the uh, idea of the district. Like, yeah, Amartya Sen that we are very, very proud of utilizing this uh, idea. So, uh, in development context, that uh, there are a lot of the works we should do. Yeah, <coughs> and the, the one philosophy of JICA is that uh, we would like to support the like, self-effort of the people there, uh, not just a one-way uh, support. In our experience, that uh, the uh, like a gifting kind type of the, the support maybe not so work very efficiently. And here in India, as I mentioned, that you are very very capable utilizing the like uh, just finance and the uh, uh, maybe many many uh, government people and also the, the NGO people uh, very how shall I say the, the capable uh, in order to achieve some target uh, comparing with other countries uh, in my sense so uh, we are very very glad to work with the, the each executive agency the what kind of the project what kind of program uh, is really prioritized and this is kind of like uh, 17 goals of SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. And there are some analysis about India. Yeah, and still the, uh, uh, I need to say that the, the status of the, the uh, index of the SDG achievement in India is uh, relatively low. Yeah, and the now the, the almost 100 trips, uh, total 156 countries. So it means that the, uh, you have uh, some room uh, to improve the situation more and more. And is there some like, uh, analysis uh, of the, which uh, target uh, you have some uh, pro and con? And the, especially some like uh, gender issues. 
and also basic in infrastructure, uh, maybe you need to well, improve among the more. This is a very, very broad analysis. <coughs> so uh, what uh, approach uh, we should uh, take uh, for supporting or just working with Indian government? Yes, so uh, in order to achieve the sustainable development, of course, uh, the, uh, you should achieve the economic development uh, with a very uh, environmental friendly manner. Yeah. And uh, how we can maybe well achieve the economic development? Of course, the, the potential of the private sector should be uh, really, really, how should I say, open and utilized. And it means that the, like a business environmental improvement uh, is really necessary. <laughs> So, the like, uh, basic in infrastructure like a road, a power, a water supply, and the, uh, uh, sometimes like hospital, the uh, education institution may be very necessary to well, the work for that. And it, uh, finally, that we may put emphasis on the like, uh, concept of the inclusive development. Yeah, inclusive development means that they not only just, uh, as you say, some like, uh, uh, people who are very capable of doing the business, but also some like uh, people uh, behind them should be also included in uh, this development. So that we should uh, not only focus on just uh, very uh, high, uh, advanced and high technology, but also to support some like a very uh, basic clinic uh, in the like, rural area. Maybe I should skip this one. <coughs> and this figure, well, the Kesaban Sensei have already uh, attached, uh, sorry, attached upon. And now the total accumulated commitment uh, from uh, JICA to India is uh, uh, 3 lakh crore. It's almost uh, 5.3 trillion uh, Japanese yen. Uh, this is now largest for the JICA. And the, uh, the annually, uh, as I mentioned, that the now commitment amount is almost uh, uh, 4 billion, but now, uh, sorry, uh, in Japanese term, like uh, 500 billion. And this is just the last year's uh, figure, uh, almost 400 billion. It's a very, very uh, the big one. And the, the, in the sector, uh, transport uh, is uh, like the uh, largest uh, uh, share. Uh, this is not because of the number of the project, but also the, the size of the, the like, uh, cost of the project. In the case of the, like a Delhi Metro, now Delhi Metro uh, uh, is like uh, uh, under the progress of the phase three. Uh, usually, if the, they like uh, construct a new line, like 20 or 30 kilo, they need like uh, uh, like one billion US dollar, for example. So the number of the, the project in like a metro is very limited. The uh, size of the cost is very big. So uh, share of the, the the money is really big in transport. And in technical cooperation, <coughs> as I mentioned, that the, the we just dispatched in India more than 1,000 people uh, in the past. And the, uh, sorry, this is uh, annual. No, well, sorry, sorry, this may be the past. And the, uh, uh, every year, we received the 250 training from India to Japan for some specific purpose of training. And the, because of time constraint that the, the, for each sector, I don't touch upon one by one, but uh, let me uh, take uh, some like uh, uh, major uh, sector. Uh, one is the cooperation on metro project. Now we have been working with the, the six uh, major cities in India, uh, Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, uh, Ahmedabad, Mumbai, and Bangalore. And the, the Delhi metro is kind of like a very popular project in Japan also. Uh, because uh, the, uh, this is kind of like, uh, not the first, but the very uh, successful project in terms of like uh, uh, impact and also the like, uh, time uh, uh, management and also the, uh, uh, as you say, the, uh, uh, saving the money of the, the project. And the, uh, Mr. Suridharan, I think it's a, he's a very uh, popular uh, to read the uh, DMRC, the Metro Corporation. Uh, he told us that the, the, he really uh, had a bad experience in the Kolkata Metro before, in 80s. Yeah, I heard that it took like more than 20 years. That was actually a different technology. Yes, yes, yeah. And the, uh, because of this experience, uh, Dr. Sridharan, I would like to maybe uh, utilize their own way. Uh, own way means that they don't, they, he don't, doesn't like have like a pressure or uh, intervention from the government directly. So he wants to 
create an independent organization, the DMRC. Yeah, this may be one of the uh, like a successful data factor, it is said. And the, because of this uh, success of Delhi Metro, now Delhi Metro Corporation have supported uh, other cities to have uh, like a new plan and operation and the, like uh, implementation supervision. And the recently in Ahmedabad, uh, yeah, we really uh, uh, celebrate the, the partial the, the, uh, operation. Uh, and the, uh, yeah, we're very glad of that. And the one of the, the <coughs> uh, headwake, uh, to be frank with you, now is that we have a lot of the requests from other states about the metro project. Yeah, but because of some budget size, that we cannot uh, cover fully uh, the every the request. So how we can maybe choose the, the prioritized one? And the, uh, in Delhi Metro, well, now total length of the network is the, the more than 300 kilometer. In Tokyo, total length of the uh, metro is uh, 290 kilometer. So now you have a better network. <laughs> so maybe you can guess that some like uh, politician say that, the, oh, in Delhi, you have already got a very good network. Why we should continue to finance this one? Yeah, this is a very, very basic question. But because of some like, uh, say, issues of the, the accessibility to some like uh, uh, metro, or uh, there are some like limitations of the, the option of the other public <coughs> transportation, well, network links itself uh, maybe uh, uh, does not mean some like uh, advanced or not advanced. Yeah, we're so still discussing this one. <coughs> and the, in transportation sector, as the Kespan Census say that the, the, we also the work with the uh, Corridor uh, project. The major one is the Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor, and also the Chennai Bangalore Industrial Corridor. Yeah, we will did uh, have a uh, uh, master plan of uh, this uh, region, that, and we try to pick up the, the uh, what kind of the, the project should be prioritized. Uh, they are like a gross corridor also. Yeah, one of the, the typical the, the project we are supporting is the, the Western uh, Dedicated Freight Corridor. This is uh, uh, 1,500 uh, kilometer length from Delhi to Mumbai. We uh, established a newly uh, dedicated uh, corridor there. And the now progress is almost 60%. Yeah, in coming few years, I believe that the, uh, uh, we can celebrate like uh, completion of the project. If the project will be completed, the, uh, there are some improvement of the, the like, uh, uh, maximum speed from the 30, 40 kilometer now to the like 100 kilometer power. And also they can deliver the uh, such kind of like, uh, uh, cargo uh, from the three days to the just uh, less than one days. Yeah, this is kind of like uh, the impact of the project. And the uh, high speed railway, well, I'm a bit hesitate to <laughs> talk about this one because of this kind of like, uh, uh, the project that many people are interested in. Yeah, and the, thanks to some leadership of the, the Indian government, now the almost every design of the component has been finished. So the, they are now starting the tender one by one. And the, until now, there are four components uh, was already on the tendering uh, stage. And in coming one year, almost every uh, tender for the 20 component uh, should be uh, open. Yeah, so uh, now uh, uh, two government agreed to complete the project uh, in 2023. And the, technically, it is very, very difficult, but uh, we try to make a best effort to comply with this like, agreement. One headache, headache again, for us that the, every time that we should talk with the, the Indian side that the, this completion date should be really quick and quicker. Yeah, at the first time when we conducted a feasibility study, the completion date was the 2025. After that, 20, uh, 2023. And now, uh, current Prime Minister really insists that, the, that this should be completed in 2022. Yeah. So that's very good pressure for the, the, the staff to maybe work harder. Okay, and the, uh, let me skip just the energy sector. And the, uh, uh, I want to say that we, we also focus on the, uh, the social sector. 
social sector includes such as water sector, maybe education, hospital, and so on. And especially the water sector, we are now the, the financing more than the 10 projects in India. And the issues and the program of the water sector, maybe you know very well, uh, demand supply gap. Even in Delhi, uh, only like a six or seven hours of the, the like, uh, uh, water supply at the time. So the, they need to maybe strengthen the, the capacity of the, the water supply. And the, also the, the some like uh, financial uh, vulnerability of the water operation. Uh, many states, uh, they don't charge water. Uh, when I was in charge of the Puruya water supply project in West Bengal, I uh, was a bit surprised that I asked them that uh, how much the, the charge uh, the you are collecting every month. They say, no, zero. Yeah, zero. Well, why zero? Because uh, this is a decision of the uh, chief minister. Yeah, at that time. Yeah, but now it's a bit changed. So, uh, uh, because of some such kind of like uh, uh, tariff matter and also the uh, non uh, revenue water. Non revenue water means that it, uh, maybe sometimes the water uh, have a leakage uh, in the process from the, the beginning to the, the end of the, the tap water. Like 50% uh, in Delhi, uh, also 50% in Bengaluru. Yeah, so this is like a waste of money. And also the, the, some like uh, health issues are really related to the sanitation and the sewage. And in order to have a very good uh, health system, but the, this kind of like uh, sewage and the water supply is a very uh, important uh, facility. So we are, uh, say, supporting the, the project in India. Uh, this is kind of like a map of the, the project uh, at this moment. And double line. Uh, the green one uh, means uh, technical cooperation, like a capacity development. And the other one is the uh, uh, Yen Long project, or Yen Long project. And the now a uh, new project is coming, a uh, uh, water supply project in, uh, uh, sorry, sewage project in the uh, Nangupur in Maharashtra. Yeah, we are now formulating the project. Yeah, give me another five or six minutes. And the uh, in environment sector, <coughs> the, the forest sector, maybe many people don't know that the JICA has been involved in the, in the past 30 years. And the, uh, like you know that the, the forest coverage in India is almost uh, 20%. This is a very, very low the rate in terms of the coverage. Uh, in the case of like Japan, it is 70%. Of course, that, uh, there are ge geographical uh, difference between Japan and India, but uh, we are very in the position to support this area, not only because some like a foresty matter, uh, but also some like uh, support some like uh, the people, uh, their like life is really de depend upon the resource of the, the forestry. And this is also related to the global issue. So uh, if the, the, you can conserve the forest or increase the forestry, uh, maybe CO2, uh, the emission is also uh, decreased. So in the past 30 years, uh, we have been working with the 14 state uh, about this like uh, project. And the, uh, not only just the biodiversity conservation and the forestry, deforestation, uh, but, uh, but also to support a self-help group with the people there to raise the income. <coughs> maybe let me skip it quickly. <coughs> and the, uh, this uh, photo just uh, show the, the before and after of the project in Tamil Nadu. And the, uh, in the project, uh, we utilized the, the, some like uh, tools, like a joint forest management. This is a kind of like a participatory uh, way of the, the deforestation. Uh, this is coming from the lesson uh, in the past that the, the, just the state government starting uh, deforestation, that doesn't work because uh, people try to maybe uh, cut the trees so easily. So the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, state government tried to uh, did ask the people to be involved in the process of this like reforestation. So did uh, uh, doing just kind of like a, a work together. Okay, and the, the finally, maybe let me touch upon the one example of technical cooperation. And the, uh, uh, we have been working for the almost 10 uh, technical cooperation project at this moment. Uh, this is uh, uh, the program or project, uh, so called the Champions for Social Manufacturing Project. 
This is a human resource development of the uh, people in manufacturing sector. This is very unique because uh, we are collaborating with the other uh, agency uh, like uh, uh, CII and the IIT, IIM, and also the, the ministry, like a triangle. And we try to develop a very uh, uh, pragmatic uh, curriculum for the, the such kind of like uh, people, uh, not only from the worker level, but also management level and the CEO level. Yeah, we invite them. And the, uh, until now, that the more than 5,000 CEOs and the, the workers uh, have been uh, participating in this uh, program. And the, uh, one of the, the very astonishing the, the aspect of this program is that the, the, for management course, this is uh, chargeable. I mean, the participatory people uh, participant should pay the, the charge for this program. Usually, the technical cooperation uh, should be done and free of charge. But in that case, that is some like, uh, uh, say, moral hazard uh, matter uh, <coughs> take place. But in this case, because of a very good curriculum, that they are very, very competitive in terms of like, become, uh, participating in the program. And the, uh, uh, so uh, manager level, we will uh, take a leave, like uh, two or well, three months of the company and join this program. And the, uh, under this like, program, that the, uh, this is just one example of the, the successful the model. The, uh, the participant just uh, created a new innovative the, uh, product. Uh, maybe you know this uh, refrigerator. Yeah, this is just uh, maybe the one result of the, the, this cooperation. And because of this very good result of the, the technical cooperation, uh, the, the uh, leader of this uh, program, uh, his name is uh, Professor Shiba, very famous name, and he got like Padma Shuri, yeah, yeah, uh, award here. That's very, very honorable to Jack Owls. Okay, and as I mentioned, that the, the, not only in the field of the, the large scale infrastructure and power, technical cooperation, but also we dispatched some like a young volunteer in India. Uh, now the, the, uh, also more than 10 uh, volunteers working. Uh, mainly they are working as Japanese teachers. And the uh, uh, two prime ministers really agree that the, the, in India, uh, Japan will support the, the uh, increase of the Japanese teacher in India. So uh, we are in a position to increase the dispatch these volunteers. Uh, so, uh, because of time constraint, that uh, I don't touch upon anything. But uh, thank you for listening. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, wonderful presentation, Masmoosan. Now uh, we have a discussant, and uh, that is uh, Dr. Balachandran from Delhi University, Department of East Asian Studies. So he will make his uh, brief presentation now. Thank you, sir. Uh, <clears throat> well, that was a wonderful uh, presentation with uh, so much uh, facts and uh, figures and uh, um, putting things really into perspective. I'd like to uh, just touch upon the uh, overall philosophy of the Japanese aid and how does that matter to uh, our own uh, development issues. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, as we know, uh, 19, uh, 1868, after the major restoration, in about a century, uh, Japan is able to make it. And you find in the 1970s, the Japanese have started, the academicians have started, uh, I'm from the academic uh, field, so I was a little familiar with this. 19, late 1970s, uh, they started talking about uh, learning from the Japanese experience of one century's uh, growth. They said that this is much more important than actually giving aid. So we had teams coming from uh, Ajiken, Institute of uh, Developing Economies, um, professors from Itotsubashi University and a whole lot of other universities visiting India, uh, the late 1970s, early uh, 1980s, and they said that this is a dialogue. We want, they didn't uh, condescendingly say that, you know, we want to advise you as to how we were able to grow, but let's have a dialogue. You know, you have certain issues, we had certain issues, maybe we have overcome some of them. So they politely worded it as, uh, worded uh, the entire uh, uh, discourse as a dialogue and went around the major academic institutions in India and I think uh, wonderful um, uh, ideas were given. 
and uh, some of them were captured by the United Nations University in different publications, uh, which I think are, uh, are very relevant even today. In this connection, there was this uh, um, Koksai Kaihatsu Center, um, International Development Center of Japan, which played a stellar role. The um, remit for um, uh, IDCJ, uh, International Development Center of Japan, was that it will do studies and tell the developing world, not just India, the entire developing world, as to what are the things they can do uh, which will quicken their uh, um, rate of uh, uh, economic growth. And uh, <clears throat> one of the um, ideas that the Japanese gave was that in the total ODA, they will allocate 1%. Uh, it will be kept aside as um, the money which can be utilized by researchers of IDCJ to travel to various countries and uh, advise the governments, etc. India was probably the only country in the world which said, no, thank you. We have enough expertise. Uh, we can do that um, ourselves. We have enough academicians. We have enough expertise. In, this was in the early, uh, late 1970s. Japanese were taken aback. But uh, later, when uh, they really appreciated the uh, position of India, saying that you just didn't waste money like a number of African countries, etc. You know, if, if you look at their uh, um, uh, assistance policies, um, after World War II, of course, they have this issue of Seike Bundri, uh, which is separation of politics from economics. The situation isn't uh, very good, uh, good with the Southeast Asian nations and the Asian countries because, because of war memories, etc. Japanese made something very clear. Look, what is done is done. Let's keep politics and uh, uh, development separate. Seike Bundri, separate politics from economics. Okay, We'll continue with our ODA policies. And that is how a whole lot of infrastructure development was done in Southeast Asia. Now, you find, OK, the other major thing that we need to know about uh, is the East Asia Miracle Report, which came out in the 1980s from the World Bank. Now, the East Asia Miracle Report was basically thought of by the Anglo-Saxon countries, which, who had a major presence in the World Bank, saying that, OK, Japan has arrived by 1968 or thereabouts. It has arrived. It has become an IMF country by 1964 itself. So, the how, what is the technology that Japan employed to become a developed country in such a short span? So they had their own interpretation and they said that it followed the models of Britain, US, etc., or the Anglo Saxon countries, and it was the market model. So they tried to push the ideas, and the Japanese economists who were in uh, World Bank at that time, Japan had quite a uh, large presence in the World Bank based on its contribution to the World Bank, and they were aghast. They said that, no, this is simply not the way. It wasn't the market mantra. It is the state. The role of the state cannot be minimized. And the West simply was not willing to accept. As you know, any report of the World Bank has, is vetted at uh, so many levels. And the World Bank was objecting to the Japanese stand. Japanese government said that it is willing to fund. And the World Bank uh, charged them $300 million for a single report. And the report was written by the Japanese. But then the World Bank managed to water it down uh, greatly and bring it more closer to their way of uh, interpreting economic development. See, the, much was at stake ideologically. They wanted to show Japan as having followed the uh, market mechanism and succeeded, and had succeeded. So this is a model for the entire Asia to uh, follow. The World Bank report can be easily, um, the East Asian Miracle report is easily available on the net. Anybody can download and see. So the Japanese are very clear. You know, if you look at um, uh, you know books like Chalmers Johnson's Mitty and the Japanese Economic Miracle, he clearly points out the tremendously important role of the state in certain sectors. Without that, development is not possible. And Japanese, um, uh, even today, I think they go by that. <clears throat> The other um, uh, aspect is that afterwards, you, of course, have the um, um, last decades. Uh, Japan, um, the, by 1990, it enters into a period of um, uh, negative or um, uh, still growth. So that definitely impacts the kind of aid they are able to um, uh, allocate. So <clears throat> uh, there is huge deflation in Japan from 1990s onwards. Now, the important point for us is that in 1991, when we started liberalizing and we went through some very tough times because our foreign exchange reserves were sufficient to take care of just about two weeks of imports, we were extremely desperate. And uh, you remember that we pledged our gold reserves also. Japan is the country which came to our rescue. 
so that that i think is a story not very well known and i'm unhesitatingly they came and rescued us at that critical juncture all right so the <clears throat> how do you look at uh, the japanese uh, um, idea of philosophy of um, helping you know i think professor kason and uh, mr matsumoto have already talked about the loan aspect it's not that uh, you know you keep giving somebody fish you teach somebody how to fish that i think is the japanese approach uh, and they are very practical about this uh, <clears throat> and um, the uh, you know the corridors and connectivities i think this is this is inbuilt into their dna why you know if you look at uh, japanese history you know you talk about the sankin kotai system or whatever you have the tokaido um, connectivity in japan historically this is just 2% of the land area in japan which is today hosting more than if i'm not uh, mistaken 40% of the entire industrial activity in japan what is this uh, stretch of land it is from tokyo to nagoya osaka majorly this just 2% of the land but more than 40% of the industrial activity takes place historically it has been, they they understand what is corridor what is connectivity how this is important you see how infrastructure development is important if you look at miti the ministry of international trade and industry its role in the post war years you find that it is extremely clear about the kind of technology that it needs to import the kind of uh, industrial development that the priority ordering is it's absolutely clear infrastructure first okay capital goods industry first then you talk about consumer goods industry 1950s nobody talked about consumer goods industry in japan it is capital goods without capital goods industry development how can you have consumer goods industry how, where is the market i mean they are very clear about this i mean i think that is what we need to learn see that is what they were trying to teach us when the um, ajiken group and others the touring industry talking of dialogues they said that look we made mistakes but we learned a few things also let's share our experience i think this is more important to you than our <coughs> giving you money i think that was the philosophy i think that is very practical and uh, so what you know the way i look at it is their experience is valuable and their willingness to share their experience with us is even more valuable i think that is how i would uh, put uh, uh, this thing finally i'll just end with uh, one <coughs> what i would call as the technology of development you see when we um, when developing nations try to develop the basic um, problem is in the area of technology technology is nothing but know how if you know how to do something you got it it's not machinery it is not capital it is know how okay so the when we are importing technology from the west when a developing country is importing the resource endowments simply don't match we are uh, you know um, we have a advantage as far as wages are concerned capital is the uh, scarce commodity it is the reverse in the west so west is producing goods taking into account the kind of resource endowments it has so when you pick up a technology and bring it to a um, developing country it simply doesn't match now the japanese have huge amount of lessons to offer in this they didn't just adapt adopt uh, western technology that is they just didn't borrow they adapted technology and their experience there i think is has got huge amount of lessons and i i'm sure um, uh, organizations like jaika are at the forefront teaching us thank you i just don't want to it's not a complete hunky dory uh, kind of story i just want to raise two small minor issues which i think he is best placed to answer this um you see we we have um, in some of the discussions in india we talk about the tying of aid and um, you know some of the western countries are uh, big culprits and as far as japan is concerned there was minor controversies sometime back but you know if you have some figures on this and clarify the picture it is really tying on of aid basically refers to uh, the kind of purchases that you need to make in a particular project supposing it is funded by japan how much money goes back to japanese companies themselves that is tying of aid that share um, you know um, that figure is not available uh, easily today it was available about 20 30 years back but the development assistance committee members have started clouding their uh, statistics and you have no other source to get that is one and secondly the dac dac uh, had uh, laid down 0.7% of the gnp 
as the basic minimum that should be given by the developed countries to the developing countries as ODA. Now that figure has not been stuck to by a number of countries except some of the Scandinavian countries. And Japan obviously wasn't able to do uh, even 20, 30 years back, it was 0.23 percent. Can mm. you tell us what is the situation today? I'm, I'm uh, Two uncomfortable questions, but I think that will round up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Okay, I am uh, General Chopra. My exposure to your country started in 64, Okinawa. Uh, you gave a super, super talk. My question is, we're going to have the Belt Road Initiative in a couple of days, and Japan is participating, India is not participating. What I want to understand from you, all these slides, super slides you've shown us, Indo-Pacific, Act East Forum, Northeast, Mekong, etc., etc., Africa. All these are covered in the BRI of China. Are you going to be complementing, supplementing, competing? Where is your relationship going to be BRI versus this? Allied to this in India itself, you're doing a lot of good work in the Northeast. What are your views on the Chinese, Bangladesh, China, India, Myanmar corridor, which in my time is known as Yunnan Initiative? We are playing it low-key. I just have a tiny observation. In that lovely slide of the Northeast, Sikkim, Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, Nagaland, Mizoram, how come you missed out Manipur? Is there any reason why you're not in Manipur? Because Manipur is very least developed also. And lastly, uh, at least we are very grateful that the interest rate is 0.1% over 40 years. I'm not a chartered accountant. But it will cost you more money to service this than the interest that you're going to get. So happy days are on for us. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you for the question. That you from the uh, professor that I very very uh, surprised that you're really expert about the Japanese only. <laughs> you know maybe uh, uh, much better than me at some some point. And the, the, as far as the procurement uh, matter. And the, until the, the 80s, the Japanese uh, loan uh, is provided in the, well, the, the condition of the tide, basically. Tide means that the, the only Japanese company uh, can be well, the, the, uh, involved in the tender. But because of some like uh, well, complaint and some like uh, well, the, the, uh, pressure from the, the DSC, uh, 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 Systems Committee uh, countries, well, from the 90s, the every loan uh, it will be just an uh, uh, international committee bidding uh, is like a condition. Yeah. So uh, at this moment, that the, the totally in the volume, maybe uh, the few percent of total cost, total, I mean, the loan is like a, just a tied, partially tied. Partially tied means that there's a, uh, the case of the, the delegated freight corridor, only India and the Japanese company can attend. But uh, the remaining one is basically international competitive bidding. And in India, uh, we check some like um, well the uh, percentage of the how much product or service are well the uh, procured through the Japanese companies. Uh, the, this is a figure in the last uh, three years only ten percent. Yeah, only ten percent. Yeah, and the uh, regarding the GDP ratio, uh, the uh, yeah very low. Yeah, uh, very same uh, situation in the like uh, in the past like uh, twenty years. Yeah, and the, uh, as you said, that in the 90s, the, the ODA budget was really, really the, the big one. But after that, now almost 50% of the peak of the budget. It means that the percentage of the GDP in terms of the ODA uh, ratio is very, very low. Yeah, maybe sorry to say. Yeah, and the, uh, second question, the second question is, uh, well, the Japanese uh, Institute of Technology is very interested in the Japanese Institute of Technology. And the second question is, the very sensitive issues. And the Japanese government uh, do not officially, does not officially agree to the uh, BRI. Yeah, and the, uh, because of some uh, political uh, the, the situation in the past one year, yeah, well, the, the Japanese government uh, announced that the, uh, they can cooperate with China in the third country. They are uh, based on some conditions. One is that this like a project is very, very open to everybody. 
And second is the very transparent process should be taken for the, the selecting and implementing the project. Third one is that the financial assistance to the project is not so heavy burden for this spend country. If every condition is uh, well achieved, well, uh, Japan may be well the considering to work together with China. Yeah, this is a basic the, the attitude at this moment. Yeah, and the, uh, in Manipur, yes, well, the, uh, we have a candidate project in the past uh, five or six years. But because of the, some security issues, yeah, uh, sometimes our study was just uh, uh, terminated in the process. Uh, this is the main reason why there is no project. Yes, I think I'll uh, turn to Sanofi. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Masmudo-san, for your excellent presentation. Uh, I just want to make two points. One is, uh, you know, we have said that we double the number of gasping companies in the last five years. We were at about 1,200, and after five years, we are now at about 1,300. So we've got a lot of catch-up to do. And how do you think we can do that? That's my first point. And uh, the second point is uh, uh, on the aviation sector, and that is also related to uh, the larger Japanese we are going to be building about 100 airports. There are some very new greenfield projects that are coming up. Uh, I noticed from your slides that you have uh, invested in uh, airports in many other countries, but not in greenfield projects. Like that. So, is there a possibility for JAXA uh, investment into greenfield Indian airports? Yeah, thank you very much. A good question. And in aviation sector, uh, in the past, at the very, very uh, the few the improvement of the Japanese side to Indian uh, the, the, the project in terms of like airport, uh, mainly because there are like security issues. Yeah. It means that the, the Indian government never request, officially request the Japanese side to finance the airport project before. But you're willing to fund it? Uh, we are ready to discuss. Yeah. And the, one example is the new airport in Dorera, mm -hmm. yeah, in Gujarat. Yeah. We have been involved in the like, uh, uh, feasibility study at the time. And some Japanese companies are very interested in the, the say, uh, operation and maintenance the, the business of the airport in India. Yeah, this is uh, one question. And the second one is the uh, investment climate. Yeah, uh, in the past five years, I believe that the, the environment of the, the uh, like business in some states have been really dramatically improved. Uh, but still, the, the, the some like, uh, how should I say, well, the, the uh, rooms, uh, the, the, the foreign, Investors, not only Japanese investors, but foreign investors are very concerned. As I mentioned, the one is like land acquisition issues, land acquisition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a some like this is a very uh, the reality the uh, the voice from Japanese investor in like Chennai. Uh, the state government really promised to give the run to them in the like industry area, and the uh, the Japanese company started some like a construction of the factory. And one day, the many well, the people say uh, visit the places that this is our our land. And the uh, state government say that the, the land acquisition have already cleared. But uh, these people say that the uh, land acquisition process is not cleared. And the state government asked the Japanese uh, investor to pay by, them, by themselves compensation. Yeah. So this is just one example. And, uh, and still, the uh, land acquisition issue is a big issue. And the second one is to some like uh, transparency of the, the utilizing the law regulation. Sometimes the uh, <coughs> Uh, sorry, I, I, my English is not so good. The sub subjectivity about the, the utilized law was such, such, such kind of like taxation or sometimes uh, uh, restricting restrict, restrict some activity there, like a permission, uh, something. And this is the second thing. And also the in infrastructure, as I mentioned. Uh, when like a Toshiba, big company, uh, established a factory in Chennai, uh, state government also did promise to well, did, uh, have a new road from the, the, the factory to the, the uh, port, mm -hmm. yeah, just 10 kilometers. Mm -hmm. uh, because the, the Toshiba factory uh, produced the very uh, high, high technology turbine of the, the like, uh, power plant. And if the, the road condition is not so good, uh, they cannot deliver this turbine on the ground to the port. Yeah. Um, but uh, say uh, three or four years later, nothing happened. Yeah, so uh, uh, now uh, it is now the, anyway completed, but uh, we, JICA, financed this uh, road improvement at the time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, uh, please, uh, could you have a brief question? 
To clarify some of like, your question, but uh, uh, we are maybe uh, working with uh, some uh, forestry department in some state, and if they feel that the uh, our say fund is not enough, maybe we should discuss with them. <laughs> yeah, about sustainability. Yeah. Can I add one question? Uh, yeah, can you also add Africa to that because uh, your ambassador had Bangladesh, Myanmar, and Africa. Bangladesh joint project. Yeah, your ambassador. Your ambassador told us they were uh, kind of finalizing project, so. Yes. Well, the, uh, the uh, I think uh, my well the, the presentation paper also did show the concrete uh, name of the project one is L LNG project in Sri Lanka, LNG, right? And in Bangladesh that there are some like uh, a highway project, yeah, and also some like a newly established uh, like a railway project on the Jamuna, Jamuna Bridge, and this Jamuna Bridge uh, finally connect to the border with the India. So this is a kind of connectivity project we should maybe collaborate together. And in the uh, Myanmar, well, because of the issue of the uh, Rohingya, Rohingya issue, well, the uh, uh, Indian government and the Japanese government try to maybe support a uh, Rakhine state in Myanmar, because Rakhine is kind of like uh, a state to accommodate the return of the Rohingya. So uh, we are now discussing the what kind of the program project, maybe school and the housing uh, is kind of like a candidate project working together. together. And in Kenya, well, the, as I mentioned, now they were discussing about hospital project. Yeah, we will co-finance this like uh, hospital project in Kenya. Yes, Mr. President. Yes, that was a thread I was Screen the uh, project uh, request, request for the Japanese ODA. And of course, that we can discuss with the uh, executive agency or like a group of concerned uh, in the process. But uh, finally, that you are ministry, central government, and central government will decide this project should be like uh, uh, financed by the foreign agency. And after that, in the Japan, also, uh, we are not a kind of an independent agency, we cannot decide everything. We, uh, we have a, uh, four, uh, sorry, three parents ministries. Every project we need to get the approval. And the, uh, say, JICA should prepare many, many documents to persuade them. Why hospital in like, Tamil Nadu is necessary? Or why hospital in Manipur is necessary? We should start from the, the history of the Manipur yeah, to explain to the, the ministry. 
to the first year. Yeah, just like uh, Paul Chandran said, the, the GDP for overseas development, the Indian government we spend very little for uh, education, education and health. So we, we develop with, with your tech, with your expertise, we could build more hospitals. And again, you are interested in developing in Africa as well. This, this would be a wonderful example, low cost, affordable care. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I have a basic question. How do you differentiate, you know, with the fact that, you know, some of the funding might not be that much financially viable. For example, Delhi Metro might be successful. Bullet train might not be that successful. Even in the, with the Metro also, some of them are not successful. So don't you feel that there will be a financial stress that with the generations and uh, stress on the fiscally and the, on the balance sheets? And my second question is, do you intend to go into, you know, renewable energy and solar energy, you know, uh, which is the, I mean, the newest te technology, you know, which country needs? needs? Yeah, thank you. Good question. Well, as you know, that in every project, well, the uh, your government and the maybe Japan side should prepare the DPR, uh, the project report. And in the report that uh, we should have a, like, uh, a careful analysis about the return of the project, not the financial return, but also some like, economic return. Yeah. So the, uh, in the case of like uh, rural road, for example, well, the, uh, the social return may be big, but uh, no financial return. Right. But uh, this is very, very contribute to the, the life of the people there. Yeah, and in, uh, in the case of like uh, power plant, for example, well, the after generation that the uh, power agency sells the, the the electricity to the people, of course they have like a financial return, and the, we carefully maybe calculate this like uh, expense and the income. And in the case of like a power sector, maybe this is a very very profitable project. Yeah, so we are doing such kind of like practice for every project. Yeah. So should I want yeah, last two? special partnership so you made the goal is a doubling you know the investment so now as 2019 is five years right so what's the your you know is the achievement progress and and then what's next plan so actually you uh, present so much achievement so far but I cannot see what's the next you know is a 2020 or 2030 plan yes thank you very much Regarding the uh, uh, presence of JICA in India, yeah, very, very good question. That if I take the, the start of the PR section, right, being this right? So how can maybe strengthen the, the PR the activity? How can you strengthen the PR? <laughs> <laughs> um, then, uh, yeah, the PR activities are actually grown by, uh, by three core tools in the past. Uh, we have been, um, now we have uh, a different set of plan that we are going to be following very soon. Uh, we, uh, um, a part of the plan is that uh, we are uh, coordinating more with the uh, 
with the media houses and uh, we are going to have some uh, closed forum discussions with them. So that is all in the pipeline. But apart from that, uh, now we have a media account of more than 4,000 articles and uh, which was very less uh, like two, three years back, which was just like 1,500 or 2,000. So now we are increasing because we are writing more articles, we are approaching more journalists. So Uh, this is really the issues uh, not only in India but also other countries. Uh, maybe you know the uh, character of Japanese uh, uh, from the like uh, kids uh, days that the, we are told by parents that uh, do not say anything about the good things. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> what we are we, are, we have done. Mm, please do not say other people or something. So uh, we should maybe change our mind a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and did uh, uh, ah, sorry, the uh, interest rate. Yes, well, did uh, uh, every year uh, we have some like uh, published the interest rate, uh, the utilized for the uh, ODA loan to the uh, uh, some categorized countries. And in the case of India, like one point three percent is like a normal interest rate at this moment. And the, uh, this like uh, uh, rate come from the, the calculation uh, the, uh, from the some like uh, mixture of the uh, source of the fund of JICA. And the source of JICA fund is with, uh, uh, equity from the, the government, and the second is a borrowing uh, from the government, and the third one is a bond issued to the public. And we just uh, mixture, uh, the, uh, calculate the mixture about this, like, uh, three sources and the, which rate should be utilized. Uh, this is kind of like a uh, calculation. And the, uh, uh, regarding the target of amount, investment ODA, yeah, uh, basically all the almost achieved. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you ask me that what's the next? Yes. Well, maybe after election. <laughs> <laughs> no, we should have possible. Yes, please. Thank you very much for the presentation. Very impressive. Yes, I have two, two, two quick questions. The first one, uh, since Japan uh, has signed the agreement to join the International Solar Alliance. Uh, will there be some room for some kind of participation by JICA uh, in support of this organization? So that's my first question. And then um, you spoke of uh, the Bay of Bengal uh, industrial growth. Um, and I would like to know if there are some projects um, to, to help India connect with um, Burma, for example, port facilities or maritime, maritime infrastructure. Thank you. Yes, um, thank you for your wonderful presentation. Very small question. In the slide number 19, the chart, how JICA functions, you mentioned its inclusive development, which is at the best. I just wanted to know why granting a project, how do you uh, measure the inclusivity of a project and also after the project, whether it has reached the last moment, the impact. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good question. Well, the, for the Solar Alliance, yes, yeah, thank you for saying so. Yes, the last uh, Prime Minister meeting that we agreed together. And now we have started uh, uh, discuss, uh, discussing this matter with the, uh, the, the Secretariat <coughs> of the uh, Solar Alliance in India. And it's a separate approach. Uh, we can consider one is like a joint research works about some like a market of the solar power, not only in India, but also other uh, developing countries. And the second is maybe the, some like a uh, finance matter to the solar the energy the project. And in India now, the, the current government tried to promote the, the renewable energy as much as possible. And the uh, such kind of like uh, development of the, like a lithium, the uh, battery, uh, maybe the one of them. So the, the, the one, some, some Japanese company have been interested in this development like Suzuki, for example. Uh, so uh, the uh, uh, JICA, not only JICA, but also other government agencies of Japan uh, try to maybe support such kind of like uh, uh, R&D, uh, the, the activity of the, the private companies. And the big B, yes, uh, thank you for saying that. Well, the, the, now JICA is financing this like a big B concept in Bangladesh. Uh, this kind of like uh, the uh, corridor project from the, the Dhaka to the Chittagong. Yeah, and the, the near Chittagong, there's a one port, port area we're now financing the port development and also the uh, constructing a new power plant there. And the, uh, after that, that we try to maybe collaborate with the Bangladesh government about the development of the SEZ in that area. And the, uh, from the context of the, like, uh, 
the, the integration or like economic uh, relation between like India and Bangladesh and the Indians, how India side can, as you say, did, uh, regard this like a port development and more strategical point view of view and the, uh, we have started discussion, yeah. And not only in Bangladesh, but also Myanmar. Yeah, the port development is going on. And the, uh, some like a share of the like volume of trade, uh, how maybe the maritime uh, should be uh, the, the, uh, composed or just uh, changed from now. Yeah, we have done some like a study uh, for this uh, purpose. And the, uh, the inclusive development is a very big concept. And the, the, uh, I didn't say in the, my presentation, but uh, every project, uh, say we finance or we just support it, uh, completed, uh, we are doing the, the post evaluation uh, the, the study. Yeah, it means that we ask the third party people, like uh, Huawei, for example, or just the NGO people, to check every aspect of the project, including the impact of the project. Like hospital project, uh, how many poor people can be now patient of the hospital? And the, how about the like, uh, improvement of the like, women in the like, water use, the association in the water supply project? Well, so the, we can check such kind of like a participation rate. <coughs> Your last uh, question. What is the progress of Uh, uh, as I mentioned, that the, the in collaboration with the uh, three state and the central government that we draw the master plan of the Chennai Bangalore Research Corridor. And in this master plan, that the, we pick up some like a prioritized project. It's maybe more than 40 projects, including like a peripheral ring road of the Chennai or maybe Bangalore, and the, the like a highway between the Chennai Bangalore and some like a water supply and so on. And the, the periodically that the pe uh, people get together, like embassy, JICA, a AP, uh, Tamil Nadu, and the Karnataka, and to monitor the progress. And at this moment, maybe 20% of the total the, the list of the project has been uh, going on. Some of them are picked up by JICA, other one maybe uh, done by the, your government, and the, maybe other one maybe uh, the, uh, utilizing the, the fund from the other donor agency. Yeah, that's the situation. You have now come to the coming here to uh, really give a very critical uh, picture of Jaika's role here. We, really, we get a view for finding time to come here. We really have uh, become wiser after listening to his views on Jaika. I'm also taking this opportunity to thank my friend, Mr. Prabhupada Balasandran, for this uh, very provocative kind of uh, you know, presentation also. And I should also like to thank all of you for coming here.